Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, and today on the test bench I'm going to be testing out Citadel Contrast Color, specifically Contrast Skeleton Horde in this case. What I've got here is a bone construct that comes with Barnabas Lord of Blood from Privateer Press's Hordes, and I've just gone ahead and base coated it with Wraithbone. Now I don't have the Rattlecan Wraithbone, which is sort of what they're pushing now with Contrast. So what I've used here is Badger Steinal Res through my airbrush and then this actual pot of wraith bone and then just applied to the whole model. So I'm going to start with the skeleton horde here and I'm just going to smear it on the whole model. So I've had a little bit of time to experiment with these um, contrast colors already, but I haven't used every single color yet and not in sort of every situation. So I do find some of them are probably going to be very situational colors. Well, you'll want to use them once in a while. This one, Skeleton Horde, I'm just, this is my first time using it right now. And I'm already feeling like this is probably going to be one of those kind of go-to colors that you'll use. Even if you're not kind of painting the contrast way, I could see this being really, really good for tinting, you know, leathers and woods. It's kind of a slightly muddy brown. And what we're going to do here is just slather it on the whole piece and let it dry. So there's some kind of capillary action that happens with these um, contrast paints as they dry, where they sort of pull into the recesses, but also make sure their flatter surfaces are shaded a little more evenly. It's a really interesting effect. And I think that's probably more than anything else what differentiates them from the old Citadel washes and glazes is just the capillary action seems to be a little bit improved. And of course, they've just greatly expanded the range of colors that are available. That's, um, they've mentioned that they're discontinuing I think it's Waywatcher Green, Gilliman Blue, and Bloodletter Red, maybe? And I think there was another color in there as well. And as much as they say they're discontinuing, I think, honestly, those colors just exist now as contrast colors, and there's not going to really be any functional difference besides the fact that it's going to come in a bigger pot now. Continue to slap it on the whole model here. Now this model's really well suited to this because you can see it's got a lot of very small detail and there's a lot of you know little grooves for this to bind into, stuff like that. I do find that the more sort of basic flat surfaces a model has, the less this um, Citadel contrast really works with it. To the point where an actual like a Space Marine, you know, the, the flagship model for Games Workshop is, in a lot of cases, not actually a great choice for doing this. But something like an Infinity model, just absolutely soaked with tiny details, is actually very well suited to it. Except that you probably don't want to slap one color on a whole Infinity model like this. You'd want to be a little more specific. And so what's funny about that is that the, the concept of just, you know, slapping on one color over the whole model and being done... Um, kind of falls apart when you have to take time to be deliberate. Like if I wanted all these ribs to be a different color, I'd have to make sure I didn't get any of this brown on it. So I'd have to be much, much slower, more methodical with this color, and then even more so with the next color. And that will really slow things down. Not necessarily as much as doing, you know, multiple different base coats and different highlights repeatedly would though. All right, so we're gonna let that dry and come back and see how it looks in a little bit. Alright, so here we have the Contrast Skeleton Horde now that it's finished drying. You can see that in general it tinted the bones a little bit, but really gathered deeply in the shadows. I could see this working really, really well, getting a lot of Skeleton Warriors on the table very quickly. In general, it also just looks good on the bone as well. It adds a little bit of like an earthy, dirty feel to them. And also yellows them at the same time, which helps them just look a little bit more aged and worn. If you were looking for more of a you know, natural white bone. This definitely doesn't get you there. I could see maybe solving that with some dry brushing after the fact. Hey, if you enjoyed this video here on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new videos.
You can also join me at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday evenings at 8.30 p.m. Eastern for live painting and sculpting shows. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps cover the cost of paint, models, and all my video production gear, but more importantly, it helps keep food in my kid's belly and a roof over his head. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons and Twitch subscribers, both past and present. Your ongoing support and encouragement is really what makes this possible. Thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.